joining me in today's video. Today's video is on the effects of marijuana on the brain and the body. So this is part two, an extension of part one. My first video, it was a very passionate video <laughs> and it's how I feel towards this um, chemical that a lot of people use and uh, there was no science behind it. It was just purely passion and uh, how I feel. I promised I would make a science-based video in that video and that's what I'm presenting today. Uh, it's going to be a little, little disorganized but at the same time decently organized. I'm going to be reading off of my notes so I have my computer in front of me so I'm going to be reading off of that. Um, I'll have some links of some of the research papers that I found that may be helpful with helping you formulate a decision if this is something you choose to do. Uh, before I continue with the video, I'm not here to convince you that you should stop or that you should start using marijuana. Uh, I'm just making this video because I wanted to make a science video and because I um, like to research. And uh, this is just merely to inform you to make an educated decision for you and just ultimately do, the best for you, do what's best for you. I still do have my opinion, and despite I do have an opinion, um, we are emotional creatures. We are uh, we make our decisions uh, emotionally, and we rationalize our decisions logically. Uh, so it's not uncommon to run into people that will defend their decision despite the fact that it's either harming or benefiting them. I would hope that this video shed some light on the topic and bring some clarity for those that maybe are seeking it or merely want to educate themselves on the effects of marijuana. Uh, marijuana does have effects. Um, however, there are effects with basically any drug that you choose. Uh, However, my main contention with marijuana um, and the reason why I'm strongly against it is because I think it's really harming uh, specifically the youth as, as it's associated with psychosis. Uh, if you're not familiar with psychosis, psychosis is when you are literally psycho. Uh, I've seen it firsthand with someone I know and it's scary. Yeah, it's sad to see that happen to someone that you care about and has a lot of potential as a result of using the marijuana, they, it changes the, the chemistry in the brain. Uh, this is not an opinion, this is a fact. Now, I'm referring to when you use marijuana between the ages of 14 to 24 because your brain is still developing between those uh, ages. However, I am still have my opinion of, of being against it even over the age of 24. So, but again, this video is to just inform you, not necessarily to persuade you or what have you. Now, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna be reading off of my computer. So this is just gonna be a full slate video. So cannabis has uh, different compounds, THC and CBD, uh, as well as different hybrid strains, type one through three, type one, two, and three. Um, and I would imagine that people created this due to the fact that people want different strands, they want to experience different things or what have you. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, it can be legal or illegal. Uh, you know, I know here on the East Coast, it's legal now unfortunately so cannabis has been seen to be beneficial medicinally uh, med medically uh, in the treatment of some ailments uh, pain anxiety if you will uh, however it can be dangerous for those who have a genetic predisposition to psychosis uh, i was talking to one of my friends who works in a mental hospital down in the south and he works with the youth where he's seen people literally go psycho and are in the mental hospital for being psycho for using marijuana. This doesn't happen to everybody, but it's, I've seen it already happen in two people in my life. 
uh, the use of marijuana, the use of marijuana with um, a high and a low. You're mixing a high and a low. Marijuana and Adderall, for example, can be very lethal and very dangerous. If you're not careful and or if you have a genetic predisposition to psychosis, uh, you could be having psychosis. Um, and the sad thing is that sometimes you don't even know you're experiencing, experiencing psychosis, but it's happening. Just because you're not experiencing psychosis right now, if you just started using marijuana, or if you've just been kind of exposed to it, doesn't mean you won't develop it later in your life. Okay, uh, now cannabis may have an influence on your way of thinking creatively. When you think creatively, you have, there's two ways of conceptualizing it. You have uh, divergent and uh, convergent. Uh, I'm going to have the link of how cannabis affects creativity down below that you can cl click and read. But basically what I found is that highly potent cannabis does impair divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is basically, it allows you to see multiple solutions to one problem. So if I gave you a bunch of shapes, like squares and spheres and circles or what have you, and I told you to make a hill out of it, your ability to creatively come up with a solution to build a hill out of it versus if it gave you a bunch of blocks of rectangles that are much easier to build upon, is your ability to think divergently. So that's divergent thinking. So cannabis may be inappropriate. Uh, there's a reason why cannabis is banned, I believe, as of right now, from what I know, it's banned in the military. If you're in, like, if you're trying to get into the military, they don't allow you to use uh, cannabis. I could be wrong because I'm not surprised if people are using cannabis in the military. I'm sure people have been using it for years. But I do know that if they're going to screen you, you have to not have cannabis in your system. Uh, so cannabis can be inappropriate for certain professions because of the cognitive demand that's required for certain careers, uh, as well as it can have an impact on your hormones. Uh, it is particularly those for it is particularly poor for those in a certain age bracket, uh, specifically those who are still developing in their brain. So you have different varieties, including sativa, indica, ruderalis, and a hybrid of each. Uh, the main ones that I'm going to touch up on is sativa and indica. Sativa is found in Southeast Asia. Indica is found in India, uh, South Africa. Indica is known as a sedative, and it's also known as in the couch. Uh, it's usually associated with people that are usually associated with behaviors of lazy and lethargic and not doing much really. Sativa is a little bit more of a mood enhancer, if you will. Now, uh, cannabis contains a variety of different psychoactive compounds with the most powerful being THC, which is Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. Uh, THC is one of the psychoactive compounds mainly responsible for changes in mood, bodily states, and sensation, as well as CBD cannabidoil, cannabidoil doil, which is known for pain management, anxiety, and for medicinal purposes. THC, CBD, uh, and CBN are the three main chemicals. CBN is cannabinol, CBD is cannabidiol. So there's two, di two different Two different ones, CBD versus CBN. The main one we're going to touch up on are CBD and C and THC. Now, sativa and indica can both be ingested uh, smoking it ed edibly. Uh, technically, smoking is very difficult to track how much you're using if you smoke it. And not to mention, smoking in general is not good for you regardless. Uh, I think that's something everyone can technically agree on. Anything you smoke is not good. Uh, you're getting into how it affects your blood brain, the blood brain barrier, which is not a good thing. Anything that's going to smoke, it's, it's uh, the chemicals, it's harmful regardless of what you're trying to burn to smoke. Smoking in general, regardless of the chemical that you're using to smoke is not good. That is something that is just a basic fact and it is what it is, even if you're trying to smoke an apple. Okay, so the fact that you're smoking is not a good thing. Now, Sativa, uh, we're going to touch up really quickly on the type of plants. So sativa is a tall plant and indica is a shorter plant. Uh, this is important to consider if you choose to use marijuana because they do have different morphologies um, because their size can bring about different psychoactive compounds. I have a picture on the screen of some of my notes that I took of a, a description of type 1 versus type 2 versus type 3. 
uh, how they are kind of made, THC dominant versus CBD dominant versus THC and CBD equal amounts. Some, some uh, a hybrid strain, for example, would be 25% sativa, 75% indica, uh, giving the rise of plant genetics. Uh, it's a new nomenclature that... Uh, so, a little bit into the science, and we all have cannabinoid receptors and uh, endogenous cannabinoids that we actually produce or we are born with when we are in the womb of our mothers. We are born into the world with, with uh, endogenous cannabinoids. Uh, the CBD and THC compounds of the cannabis uh, can bind to those uh, receptors uh, with much greater affinity than our endogenous. So this is uh, not a good thing. The reason why is because if you start to use THC, CBD, it can outcompete your endogenous cannabinoids, which uh, can lead to issues. Use the compounds THC and CBD, it binds to your receptors with greater affinity, and it produces a heightened effect on your mood and perception than your endogenous cannabinoids. This is important because it seems to be that it outcompetes your natural endogenous cannabinoid systems. So there's two main endogenous cannabinoids, uh, EAE and 2-AG. EAE is anadamide and the 2-AG is arachidinol glycerol. I'm going to have the words on the screen if you want to look it up. So cannabis can be either beneficial depending on uh, different factors or harmful because it competes with your endogenous cannabinoid system. So a little bit on the science behind it. I'm just going to try to fly through it, make it as simple as possible. Uh, the endogenous cannabinoids are released from your neur neurons. Your neurons are your nerve cells. So we all have cells. We are made up of cells. Our nervous system cells are called neurons. The endogenous cannabinoids are released from the neurons via the postsynaptic side. You have a presynaptic side and a postsynaptic side with your neurons. Uh, they decrease the probability a neuron can release a neurotransmitter types of cannabinoid receptors, CB1 and CB2. There's a decent amount of research regarding these um, two receptors that you can find just by Googling and by PubMed. PubMed is a research site, really cool site if you're into reading research papers. Um, so CB1 is found in the brain, your brain and your spinal cord. CB2 receptors are found in your immune system, your liver and your genitals. So the endogenous cannabinoids impact your CB1 and CB2 receptors depending on the context. Sometimes it increases or decreases communication between neurons. When cannabis comes in, the THC and CBD binds to the CB1 receptor with much greater affinity than the endogenous. And it seems to be that it outcompetes the endogenous, which could lead to issues. Again, I'm going to have some research papers if you choose to read those so you can get a better understanding if you so choose. So a note to understand, uh, cannabis peaks at about 30 to 60 minutes after ingesting uh, and it is lipophilic, meaning it, it can pass through your fatty tissue. Fun fact, your neurons have a thick fatty tissue around it, fatty membrane around the cell. This is why it's important to eat quality fats, uh, being that the fats that you eat kind of does make up the fats of your cells, which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing if you're eating poor quality fats, things like too much chocolate, too much unsaturated fat. Um, so it's really important to eat quality fat so that you have healthy cells. Okay, <clears throat> so everyone may experience uh, ingesting THC and CBD differently. Uh, a lot of this is also genetics, but Bear with me. So the sativa creates a head high, elevated mood, nonstop talking by activating the CB1 receptors in your prefrontal cortex. Your prefrontal cortex is a part of your section, part of your brain. Uh, whereas the indica is, like I said earlier, a sedative or relaxing. So you might notice some people that use marijuana, they like, I, I've met some people where they use marijuana and they just don't seem to stop, stop talking. There's other people that use marijuana and they are really lethargic. So they are different strains depending on what you use. So that's a little bit on the science, very, very straightforward. I want to bring to you, how can you use marijuana safely? Because obviously people are going to continue using it. 
So how can you do it safely? And, but what does safely even mean? Does safe mean something different to me than it does to you? Because in my risk tolerance may be different from yours. That may be. However, uh, my main contention with this is even if you use it safely, the problem is that if you use it in a controlled manner, you actually technically still don't know how much you're using. One of the other issues is that it's not uncommon for people to use it and to adapt to it and then having to use more to experience the same effect from what they used to use. Uh, our bodies are very smart, so your body's going to adapt to what you're doing if you're not smart or if you don't really know what you're doing. There seems to be research that marijuana can cause deficits in memory, and I've seen this firsthand in two people in my life that have uh, issues with short-term memory. Uh, this is due to the reduction in activity in the hippocampus in the brain. So your brain has different parts, one of them being the hippocampus. Uh, regardless of which string you use, there seems to be a suppression in the neural circuits in the basal ganglia, another part of the brain, which is responsible for action planning, and the cerebellum, another part of the brain, which is responsible for balance and motor planning. Uh, the presence of CB2 explains why people get reddening of the eyes due to less lubrication. Uh, it's not surprising that if you use marijuana, there seems to be a reduction in the neural circuits in the basal gland ganglia, thus a uh, poor decision-making, poor ability to kind of rationalize your decisions and to think decently logically. I've seen it firsthand in, in some people where they just can't seem to function as a human being as a result of using cannabis. Uh, I, they didn't abuse it necessarily and they were some people vape some people just roll it up and smoke it but regardless that is a pattern that I've personally seen from the people in my life um, and if you choose to use marijuana if you're watching this right now and you think that you are able to still function as a human being I wouldn't be surprised if you are experiencing some sort of symptom such as uh, delayed speech because it does impact the muscles in your in your uh, in your ability to speak. Uh, I didn't touch up on that in today's, my notes here, but I did find some research that um, marijuana, if you use it like a lot, can impair your ability to speak. The cannabis does impact the brain and the body via affecting mainly the CB1 rece receptors. Uh, and there is really no way to predict which strand will, how it will affect somebody because it can affect everybody differently. How it affects you may be different from how it affects someone else. Um, into the impacts of cannabis on all your hormones. So uh, there is some research that cannabis can impact sexual desire. There is a paper, Psychopharmacology and the effects on hormones. I'll have it linked below. Uh, but there seems to be some research that supports the fact that uh, cannabis can affect that. Some people, it can actually make them more uh, sexually um, turned on. Others, it may turn them off. So it just depends on the person. Uh, but cannabis does, it, it increases prolactin, or prolactin is a hormone. If you smoke it more than two times a week, and it also seems to decrease dopamine, which is the happy hormone, and uh, also decreases testosterone, uh, and it increases aromatase, aromatase enzymes, the enzymes that convert testosterone to estrogen. I am not surprised by this because I've seen guys where they use marijuana and they become really feminine. Um, now, I made a video talking about feminine men and the rise of feminine men. Um, and I don't, I actually, I'm not even too sure how I feel about this whole topic. And some people might argue, oh, well, you're a very masculine girl because you have muscle. Yeah, I have muscle, but I'm not trying to act like a dude. Okay, I'm still a girl. I'm still consider myself very feminine in my nature, in my personality, and how I carry myself. But uh, to be a very feminine man means to not, you can't provide, provide. You can't, you're not working towards your goals. You're not creating something. Um, you're not taking ownership. You're not, um, there's just different ways it can manifest. Those are a few that I, I would consider being a ma masculine man. Um, the main one is protecting what's yours, being a man of honor, a man of conviction, a man of protection, protecting your family, you're protecting your loved ones. 
these are all things that I think are, unfortunately, a lot of men are don't seem to have nowadays. Uh, and I'm convinced that some of it is associated with the use of marijuana. Marijuana seems to, it, there is proof that it lowers your testosterone as a man and, or woman, but for, I'm just referring to men right now, um, which is not unusual if you are a man and you are really into your feelings. Um, you're constantly feeling what you feel. I mean, it's great to have feelings and to feel what you feel, but, uh, it's another another thing to let that affect you to the point where you can't function. That's a real problem. Okay, that was a side tangent. So THC is also known to be inhibitory for gonadotropin releasing hormone, which is the hormone that releases from the hypothalamus and reduced levels of LH and FSH hormone, which reduces testosterone and sperm production, as well as egg health in females. Some females don't experience any issues with using marijuana and their menstrual cycle, for example. Again, that goes back into genetics. Some people just respond differently. So who should avoid cannabis? Uh, smoking of any kind can be detrimental to your endothelial cells. Going back to what I said earlier, smoking of any kind in general is not good. You shouldn't smoke it, anything at all, okay? That's just like not good. Uh, one of the reasons is that it does affect your endothelial cells uh, regardless of the drug. There seems to be a strong evidence that long-term use of cannabis may increase anxiety and people would need to ingest more to receive the same, same relief. Uh, going back to what I said earlier, you're going to, depending on the person, some may, people may experience more anxiety, some people may experience less anxiety, depending on the strand that you use. But I wouldn't be surprised if you happen to have to use more to experience the same effect than before, because again, your body seems to adapt. Uh, there also seems to be a link between depression uh, and cannabis. Cannabis seems to make people four times more likely to develop depression, which is especially dangerous for people between the ages of 16 to 24, because once again, your brain is still developing. Um, side note, my friend that, that works at the mental hospital, a lot of the people that are in the hospital are young people that were using marijuana, mixing marijuana with other chemicals, and they've developed bipolar, become psycho, or uh, dep like highly depressed and suicidal. So this is serious stuff. You're dealing with chemicals in your brain, and if you're, especially if you're young, uh, it can really set you up, really set you back in your life ahead of time. So the use of cannabis, uh, as we already mentioned before, uh, may cause severe anxiety and psychosis later in your life. It thin the gray matter, which is the prefrontal cortex in your brain. Um, this part of the brain is responsible for planning, controlling your emotions, controlling your reflexes, and organizing your life, uh, and things that make up a functional being. Going back to what I said earlier about how people with marijuana, from what I've observed, from, the, from what I've seen firsthand, is that Typically, when you use marijuana, it seems that the people that use marijuana can't seem to function decently well. Even if you feel that you can function at your job fine, I wouldn't be surprised if later down the road, you are not able to function some things, things that you used to function, uh, be able to function normally, but can't anymore because you've been using marijuana for so long. So the more cannabis you use, uh, the more impaired your neurotic circuits may become. Okay. Now that we've gotten to the science, uh, why is this all important? Because it does affect your cognitive processes. I would say, I wouldn't even say that smoking nicotine is better than marijuana. I think they're equally as bad. But the main reason why I'm against why, how I feel, what I feel, is you are dealing with your neuro circuits, the uh, cognitive processes that you need to function as a human being. If you can't function up here, how are you? How do you expect yourself to function and to take care of yourself in your life? Uh, this is serious stuff that if you are not careful, it can really quite literally take your own life away slowly. Uh, it can hurt your career, it can hurt your relationships. That's that. So how do you reverse the damage from cannabis? First, you have to stop. Stop using cannabis. People say it's not addictive. Technically, it's not chemically addictive. It is physically addictive. And the best way is to just stop completely. Uh, again, cannabis affects your brain and your ability to rationalize, to think clearly, and to function as a human being. 
So my first tip is to stop. Uh, focus on recouping your endothelial cells. So uh, the way you strengthen your endothelial cells, if you will, is by working out more, start lifting some weights, start working out, cardio, uh, doing some yoga, walking more, get outside, take in the breath, the nature's air, kind of nature's medicine, uh, sleeping more, avoiding nicotine, eating well, avoiding processed foods, avoiding sugar, drinking lots of water, drinking some tea. I would even say, I would go as far as to say, avoid co coffee. I'm not a huge proponent of coffee and a lot of people would disagree with me. There's research to support that coffee is beneficial. There's also research to support that it can, um, you know, uh, not be good depending on the context. Uh, but to each their own, this is just my opinion. But the main conclusion is if you would like to reverse the effects of your, the damage from cannabis as a result of using it for X amount of time, Number one, you have to just stop. Number two, focus on strengthening your endothelia cells by working out, eating well, sleeping more, and avoiding nicotine. Uh, the main conclusion from today's video is that cannabis and adolescence is a very poor decision as it seems to disrupt your neural circuits. I'm gonna feature a link to the uh, paper below. It's called the Association of Cannabis Potency and Heavy Cannabis Use. Uh, you can read those below if you're interested. But that is uh, pretty obvious that if you're gonna use it at a very young age, I would not be surprised how it, if it affects you later in life, uh, whether it be psychosis, depression, or like severe anxiety. So that is the video on the science behind how marijuana affects the brain and the body. Uh, again, I hope this was to inform you, to educate you, to bring some value to you, to hopefully make help you make an informed decision if this is something you choose to do, or if this is something you choose to stop. And I would hope that this discourages you to start using it and to avoid being pressured from your peers to use this product. Thank you for watching today's video. Please subscribe to see my YouTube channel. Click below to support me and to check out my other amazing stuff. For any inquiries, you can email me or reach me down below. Any questions that you may have related to health, fitness, science, nutrition, uh, entertainment, what have you, any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I am more than welcome the, um, the reach out. Thank you as always for supporting and I will see you in the next video.